City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday the 24th of September 2019. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and First Nations people who are with us today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand in silence in the memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air. Thank you, members of the city. Members, um, takes us to item number five, which is the leave of absence. We have an apology tonight by Councillor uh, Sims. Um, item six, the confirmation of minutes from the 10th of September. If I could have a member move the minutes be accepted. Thank you, Councillor Connell and a seconder, De Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, are there any changes to the minutes? If not, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against, the minutes are passed. Um, we have several deputations tonight. Um, members, uh, by our standing orders, um, the meeting uh, generally will provide a maximum of five speaking opportunities per, per meeting, um, unless we determine otherwise, and only three deputations to be heard in relation to the same issue at any given time. Uh, tonight we have seven, we have four deputations on parking and three deputations on trees. So I look to the floor to see if we're happy to accept all seven, um, just by a show of hands. Thank you, members. Um, so we will accept those deputations. Um, and the order of the deputations, we have Mr. Dean Mays uh, to talk to car parking in and around North Adelaide. Uh, Mr. Mays, if you come forward, you have five minutes to speak. Um, mem uh, ladies and gentlemen, we don't uh, take questions after the deputations, but, uh, and we will keep you to your time limit of five minutes. Thank you. Lord Mayor, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillors. My name is Dean Mays and I'm an intensive care registered nurse at a North Adelaide hospital. I come before you this evening to speak on behalf of a large community of my nursing colleagues working at the three major 24-hour hospital sites in North Adelaide. Over many years, nurses working at these three sites by necessity arising out of shift work, have had to park their cars at various on-street locations as close to their place of work as possible. The nature of shift work means that it is often very difficult to make use of a single paid parking facility and the ability for nurses to park their cars at close on-street bays for an eight to 10 hour minimum has been their only option. 
For many of us, public transport is not a viable option, as services do not capture us all, especially those who reside in outlying suburbs. Carpooling too is not practicable because of the great variation in shifts that nurses work. Earlies, short earlies, lates, short lates, and night duty are just such examples. Recently, the Adelaide City Council have made significant reductions to the allowable times on-street parking locations can be used. This has resulted in nurses either having to negotiate to leave hospital grounds in order to move their cars to avoid being fined, or accepting that they will be fined for parking beyond the time allowed. The nature of our work is such that we can't simply pause a delicate operative procedure, call time out on a cardiac arrest, or ask an expected mother to hold it in because a nurse needs to move their car. The expiation notices that result are not an insignificant amount for a nurse on an award salary. In reducing the time allowed for certain car parks or eliminating them altogether, nurses have been forced to park further and further away from their place of work and, in, and walk increasing distances to and from their vehicles. During daylight hours, the inconvenience is confined to the walk alone. However, after hours and at night, inconvenience coupled with safety presents a far more dangerous equation. Over the past decade, there have been reported incidences of physical attacks against nurses in the North Adelaide area. In 2012, many of my colleagues worked in the shadow of what became known as the North Adelaide Stalker. And indeed, some of my colleagues experienced near miss encounters with that individual before he was apprehended by police in 2015. Random attacks against nurses have continued since that time pursuits, muggings, and attempted physical harm. Reports of, <coughs> reports of violent attacks against women feature regularly in the news media. You will no doubt be aware of the tragic cases of Eurydice Dixon in Melbourne and remote area nurse Gail Woodford on the APY lands, both of whom were fatally attacked after hours in the course of their work. It is, in my view, only a matter of time before a similar tragic incident befalls a nurse walking to her or his vehicle in the darkened streets of North Adelaide. The Adelaide City Council have been made aware of this in the past. While I note that several positive overtures have emerged in recent discussions with certain parties within Council, a lasting solution must be found that will protect my nursing colleagues working at the three North Adelaide hospital sites affected by changes to car parking. Lord Mayor, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillors. We are the nurses who bring new life into the world. We comfort our patients at the end when they take their last breath. We care for children and adults afflicted by cancer. We work alongside surgeons in the operating room, battling traumatic and life-threatening injury, disease and suffering. We put in long hours. We dedicate ourselves to our patients. We serve others before we serve ourselves. Both I and my colleagues are frustrated and fearful because of this issue. We simply want to be able to attend our place of work and park our vehicle as, post, as close as is practical, free from the worry of receiving an expensive fine or leaving at the end of the shift, worrying that we might be violently attacked on the long journey back to our vehicle. We do not feel that this should be too much to ask. The time for bickering, point scoring, debate and bureaucratic delay has passed. Nurses need action and we need it now. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Mays. Uh, next, for the deputation, I have Mr. Matthew Noble, who's going to be talking about car parking restrictions in the western end of North Adelaide. Mr. Noble. Lord Mayor, uh, councillors of the City of Adelaide, CEO, Senior Management of the City of Adelaide. My name is Matthew Noble. I'm a teacher and the Director of Administration at St Dominic's Priory College. Many of you know that because I've written to you several times. I previously gave a deputation to this council three months ago on the 25th of June, where I outlined the devastating effect that parking restrictions are expected to have on our staff's ability to park within a reasonable distance of our school. I can now tell you that the effect on our staff has been massive. 
The parking restrictions created the situation where the only sizeable section of unrestricted parking is on Molesworth Street. And that may seem okay, but directly outside our school, it's actually full um, by 7 a.m. each morning, mainly by those who transit to the city and some nurses that work at Calvary. Nothing against the nurse work at Calvary, but they have little choice. The staff have informed the City of Adelaide um, Sorry, the staff from the City of Adelaide uh, have informed me that these car parks are intended for use by the St Dominic's Priory College and our staff, but unfortunately our staff are unable to use any of them because they're all full by 7am. Our staff have been forced to park in three-hour zones and move their car twice per day. For our college and its staff, it's unacceptable as teachers have very little time where they are able to move their car and they've got a duty of care to the students who are unable to leave. In a recent briefing, Councillor Moran implied that it was our students that were causing the parking problems in North Adelaide. At St Dominic's, we have 70 Year 12 students. About half of those have a driver's licence, but of those, only about 10 actually drive to school on a normal school day. But since the parking restrictions were introduced, none of those students actually drive to school at all. Um, I actually believe that the young women that go to our school have as much right to drive and park in North Adelaide as anyone else. The parking restrictions have not actually benefited the local residents as cars continue to be parked directly outside the residential properties in our section of North Adelaide. I've read the feedback that was provided to the City of Adelaide. Almost no concerns were expressed by any residents in our section of North Adelaide. And the most recent report prepared by council staff indicated that the residents do not support parking controls being installed in their street where there had not been any parking issues previously. One of the recent reports of council staff, it was recommended that a further six hour parking um, restriction be implemented in Molesworth Street adjacent to our college. We do not agree that implementing a six hour restriction uh, would assist our school. As the parking restrictions start at 8 a.m., the nurses at Calvary would already fill those parks and be able to park for at least eight hours prior to our staff arriving. St Dominic's strong preference is for council to return all of the recently restricted parking to the previously unrestricted parking status. Given the finely tuned balance that was in place before, uh, our school believes this would alleviate the pressure currently being experienced by our employees and visitors. But this must be completely abandoning the parking restriction trial. We do not believe that the parking restrictions have improved the outcomes for anyone. I urge you to reverse the decisions by the City of Adelaide. We support the motion on notice by Councillor Kiros to revoke the parking restriction trial, although we still believe that the subsequent motion doesn't go far enough. It is our view that all the parking restrictions on the internal streets in the western section of North Adelaide must also be reversed as a matter of urgency. Given that St Dominic's Priory College and the Dominican Sisters have been in North Adelaide since 1883, more than 100 years prior to most residents, I think that our school and its staff need to be shown some more consideration by the City of Adelaide. I would like to see the City of Adelaide believe in us and make our job of educating the next generation of young women easier and not place increased obstacles in place for our teachers to do their job. Thank you for listening to my deputation. Thank you, Mr Noble. The third deputation tonight is Ms Stephanie Hamron. Um, again, on the North Adelaide parking trial to residents of Aquinas College. Thank you, Ms. Emma. Good evening, Lord Mayor, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillors. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak tonight. I am the registrar at Aquinas College, which is a tertiary residential college at One Palmer Place, North Adelaide. I would just like to tell you that the impact on the parking trial on the Aquinas College students has been really a bit silly. What happens in the college now is every two hours during the day, someone's phone alarm goes off. They need to move their car, or even worse, they're at uni and one of their friends has to have that responsibility to move the car. Um, and the other day, in fact, I had a really distraught child come in and say to me that the car they had to move was a manual and they couldn't drive it. The the problem is also that it's impossible for our students to carpool, as has been suggested. 
Um, our children need their cars because they are residents at North Adelaide, they come from country areas. Most of them are supporting themselves or are contributing to their parents paying fees at Aquinas. They have part-time work and it's mainly after hours. 60% of our residents are actually female. At the moment, they're having to park their cars a long way away or move their cars every few hours. They also need their cars to travel, travel to and fro from various distant university campuses, travelling to and from sports training and games. They're really involved in the Adelaide community and travelling to and from their families in rural locations. What we respectfully suggest is a reversal of the trial. As far as we're aware, there wasn't a parking issue around Aquinas to begin with. We have very few neighbours and those that we have, we're very respectful towards. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Next, we have Jeannie Lorraine Davidson uh, on the trees outside Lot 14, North Terrace. Welcome, Ms Davidson. You have five minutes. Lord Mayor and councillors, thank you for the opportunity to speak and thank you for the work you do. I frequent the North Terrace Boulevard outside Lot 14 several times a week and sometimes several times a day. I am very familiar with this project. This development of the Global Space Centre, the Science Precinct and the Indigenous Cultural Centre is very, very exciting. This development will be a world-class jewel in the crown for our city. Renewal SA is doing a great job on the building side of things. The North Terrace Boulevard frontage is another matter. Let me say here that people appreciate that as councillors and decision makers, you have a great deal of material you are required to get on top of. It is understandable that you might believe that a government funded department like Renewal SA would never make a mistake and the easy option for you may sometimes be to just say yes to everything they put before you. That is why I'm here to help you. <laughs> I can tell you that as far as the North Terrace Boulevard frontage to our magnificent world-class Jewel in the Crown development goes, Renewal SA have got it badly wrong. I have here the plan they are offering us for the boulevard frontage. You need to have a very good look at this. This plan is a tired, stale plan they have dredged up from 2001. This is the kind of plan that developers use for suburban shopping centres. We do not want a suburban shopping centre frontage for our world-class jewel in the crown of our city. Why don't we want a suburban shopping centre frontage? Because we are not building a suburban shopping centre. We do not want a bland boulevard frontage. We want a grand boulevard frontage. A grand boulevard frontage with our grand old trees. We want modern sculptures, contemporary art installations. We want different levels and walkways leading down imaginative pathways and maybe an amphitheatre further along near the Botanic Gardens end in front of the Indigenous Cultural Centre. An amphitheatre where groups of students can engage with the natural environment and breathe the fresh air provided by our grand old trees and the Botanic Gardens. An amphitheatre where groups of people can share in the Welcome to Country smoking ceremony. We want a spectacular boulevard frontage that would become as iconic as our festival theatre and our stadium. I spoke to someone at Renewal SA about our 100 year old trees. She said to me that these trees were in the way and the footpath under them would need to be dug up. Well, these trees and this footpath have not been in the way for over 100 years. And that footpath is the most stable footpath in Adelaide, having serviced thousands and thousands and thousands of people coming and going from the old Royal Adelaide Hospital. To finish up, I want to address the Arbutus, uh, uh, Arbutus report. 
I had a conversation with this gentleman. He fulfilled his contract to report on the physical aspects of these trees. He tells us that these trees are valued at $660,000. I asked the gentleman why there was no ecological scientific information with his report. He told me he was not contracted to do any ecological science. Ladies and gentlemen, there has been no science conducted on these trees. Here in Adelaide, where we have eminent ecological scientists, such as Professor David Payton and Professor Chris Daniels, here right in front of what will be our world-class science and space precinct, you have not conducted the science. Here, where we will have our world-class space centre, working with NASA, who have the instruments to measure the ground temperature on the surface of Mars and to measure the atmosphere on Mars. Lord Mayor, has the council written to our space people, asking them to use their instruments to measure the input of carbon dioxide and the output of oxygen from our 100 year trees here on our planet Earth? Have you asked our space people to measure the contribution these big trees make to cooling our city down in the fierce heat of summer? Thank there is nothing in this report Thank you, Ms. Davidson. I'm afraid your time oh, is we're over. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Uh, next, we'll hear from Dr. Lucien Caffey on the Lot 14 trees. Thank you, Dr. Caffey. You have five minutes. Hello, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening um, with the extra amount of people. My name is Lucian. I'm a research academic. I was born and raised in Adelaide and I've returned here to live. Um, there's a handout going around uh, for you all with some information and some pictures that I'm going to refer to. So evidence leads me to question whether in fact due diligence has been performed in gaining appropriate specialist advice on viable alternatives to the removal of the 11 historic trees on North Terrace. There's been a lot of debate, but when we examine the narrative closely, there are some serious holes in the logic and questions need to be answered. So just bear with me while I revise the story so far. So in on the 8th, the Council Tree Assessment Report dated 8th of August this year, Mark Scharnberg highlights the exceptional visual amenity of the trees and he recommends that they be retained. Then between the 8th and the 21st of August, we heard a plethora of statements by the Lord Mayor and other councillors to the effect that they want to save these trees if at all possible, they being you, you all. And let's assume that these were genuine sentiments expressed. Then on the 3rd of September, at a committee meeting, a presentation was heard from Oxygen Director James Hayter, in which he stated, the first thing we did was say, can we keep these trees? And the answer was, no, you can't do that. Discussion then revolved around the problem of terminal damage to the roots when lifting the existing pavers and excavating the site ready for new paving. This opinion given by James Hayter on the 3rd of September seems to have been universally accepted by council. And yet uh, we've done some homework for you and the evidence directly contradicts Hayter's claim. I refer you first to SA Gov and Adelaide Council's own policies, which contain specifications for water sensitive urban design and the use of pervious AKA permeable pavements. When pervious pavements, pavements are installed, no digging or disturbance of the established tree roots is required. It's what's called a structural soil, where paving is placed slightly above the existing ground level to avoid root damage and permeable aggregates allow runoff to soak and flow without any compaction of the pavement. 
And guess what? Oxygen have already proven that they have the capability to do this, so we don't need to reinvent the wheel for Lot 14. Right here in Adelaide at Fig Plaza, which is a premier tourist attraction designed by Oxygen Landscape Architects, existing trees with raised roots have been safely and beautifully incorporated into the development design. And you can see some pictures there, and there are links to this information. Alex Gain, designer for Oxygen, stated, and I quote, we have been given almost the impossible brief, that is to incorporate the non-negotiable historic Moreton Bay figs into the development. The other non-negotiable for that brief was circulation and movement, that is creation of a seamless free roaming pedestrian environment and also access to fire trucks. Another excellent case study for pervious payment installed around existing trees is the Thomas Cherry Forecourt at La Trobe University in Bundura, Melbourne. And there they used an aggregate for the permeable paving that was very high quality stone particles and a lot of emphasis was placed on the quality of the finish and the fact that the paving product is guaranteed indefinitely. So now that we know the trees can in fact be saved and incorporated into the master plan, the real question remains, why have these options been swept under the rug? Much has been made about achieving a consistent street aesthetic in keeping with the 2001 master plan vision for North Terrace. I, for one, do not want a backyard blitz approach to development. I want future thinking design that respects the city's climate emergency declaration and heritage prominence and is sympathetic to existing key elements of the landscape. I expect that if directed to do so, Oxygen could quite readily work with suppliers to achieve a striking granite aggregate that is apparently so crucial to the master plan. I put it to you that any assertion that it's impossible to keep these trees, which we heard last week at the meeting, is ignorant at best and arguably disingenuous. I also question the convenience with which the council's arborist report has been buried and a subsequent alternate report from arborist Dean Nicole, which is less favorable to the trees, keeps being referred to. Uh, it looks very much to me like a hostile development agenda is being pushed forward. Um, anyone can slap down a commerce oriented technology and science hub but let's rise to the occasion using some actual innovation and make the ostensible values of Lot 14 a reality and not merely false rhetoric. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Caffey. Amber Grant has been withdrawn. So I have Ms. Elizabeth Green on the North Adelaide car parking trial. Thank you, Ms. Green. You have five minutes. Welcome. Thank you, Lord Mayor, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillors. I thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Libby Green. I speak on behalf of the 740 members of the Facebook page, Car Parking Crisis North Adelaide Hospitals. I'm also a registered nurse at a North Adelaide hospital. Firstly, I would like to address that the parking trial seeing a change to 850 plus 10 hour and unrestricted parks has in fact exacerbated the problem rather than offer a solution to the shortage of parks in North Adelaide. For the past nine years, I have chosen to park 15 minutes or one kilometre from my workplace on Bundy's Road <coughs> where I was accommodated for my eight or 12 hour shift. Since the imposed changes, I now walk beyond the Hackney Hotel, which is a 30 minute or two kilometre walk along the Torrens and Parklands to my place of work. I'd like to highlight that my frustration is exacerbated as I walk along Bundy's Road, where most of those three hour parts now remain empty Monday to Friday. I'd go so far as to say the parking trial has been counterproductive when you consider shift workers are now choosing to park in the one to three hour parks in direct proximity to the hospitals, which I understand are intended as short-term, high turnover car parking zones. Workers are parking here for safety reasons, not convenience, so as to avoid walking distances alone at night. This also means they have to move their vehicles numerous times throughout their shift. As a consequence, this has created a shortage of parks for patients and visitors who frequent the hospitals. Please consider the nature of nursing that with the change of every shift, there is an overlap of staff for a period of time. 
hence a greater demand for parking for that crossover period. On a positive note, the imminent move of the Women's and Children's Hospital will considerably ease the pressure on parking in the foreseeable future. I would like to highlight that the multi-storey car park is currently filled by 8.30am and public transport and carpooling is not a viable option when considering rotating shift work. Recent discussions of suggested permits, my response, and I speak for the 160 people who engaged with this on the Facebook page, if permits were offered to only a proportion of shift, shift workers, as suggested, this that would fall a long way short of solving the current problem and is also an unfair attempt. I support the reversing of the parking trial as soon as possible, but add, this must return all 850 plus parks to the North Adelaide community, which of course, in addition to the residents, includes the thousands of staff, patients and visitors that frequent the three major hospitals in North Adelaide on a daily basis. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Members, that is the end of the deputations for this evening. That takes us to item 8. 8.1 is a petition to save the 11 trees on North Terrace. I need someone to move the petition be accepted. Thank you, Councillor Martin, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Um, given it's noted, if I could have those in favour of accepting those against, that is carried. Thank you. Uh, members, that takes us to item 9.1, recommendations of committee and APLA. Uh, recommendation one is the lot 14 trees uh, renewal essay. We need someone to move. S sorry, Councillor, oh, would you sorry, mind yeah. sitting down? Sorry, okay. good evening. Um, I did actually see Councillor Noll. I want a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. You didn't want to second it? No? Councillor Canal, did you wish to speak to her? Yes. Uh, yeah, I rise to, to, to support this. Uh, and I know this is really a, a difficult and certainly has a, a very heartfelt um, issue. But when you look at from the uh, from the facts, as in uh, these trees are 100 years old, yes, and they have uh, a, a limited lifespan going forward. And uh, in that time frame, uh, we have to still maintain those trees and they still ultimately be removed within our lifetime easily enough. And any alternative that will, any other change we have, they'll, they'll last for four or five generations of people. And that's about the future and not about retaining the present. And it's been put forward simply because we've changed Lot 14. It's become now that new hub that's just was expressed already during the deputations. And of course we're redoing that, but it's also in part uh, by redoing the footpath and things like that, you're broadening the footpath, you're making the access now for someone that can ride uh, the cycle, etc., from the botanical gardens all the way down, yeah, away from the, the road because there are narrowings because of the tram tracks and things like that. So all of those things contribute towards uh, how a uh, decision that you would need to make. And we look at that and we look at uh, you know, going forward that there are 42 trees replacing uh, the 11 uh, and these are going to get you know, into their best in you know, 2030, 2040. The trees that are there right now and the, the rest of the boulevard are already nine years old and already giving uh, good uh, street cover and, cut, uh, and uh, shade uh, during, that, uh, you know, during the heat of the day and the middle of the summer. And we also have to look at about us as a council and what can we deliver. Okay, this is a this is a compromise in the sense uh, of these trees specifically, but uh, this is part of a project, and that project, uh, this component of it, costs five million dollars. And if we do not, uh, uh, you know, uh, look at that and say, well, this is going to have to be done anyway, and uh, if, if within the next ten to twenty years, this money could be better used by us now. Uh, and we can contribute to the greening of Adelaide and uh, use it in other ways uh, uh, for the benefit of the community and also uh, improvement of our tree canopy, which we uh, said that we wish to do 20% uh, uh, increase in the amount of tree canopy. And we can use this uh, as, uh, as a, uh, to assist improve what we are doing for the city and for its residents. 
And if we look at that as being a, a much more positive benefit than trying to retrain trees, which we still will have to replace in not that in not such a long time in the in the lifespan of a tree. And I think we've got to consider those issues. And we talk about the value of the trees. Well, these other trees, when they reach it in 15 to 20 years, they will be $2 million worth of trees, um, contributing actively and con you know, continuously to the improvement of our environment. And this is that all sits into that. The city in the last couple of years has planted over 350 trees uh, each year. And we use that, we use that as an op uh, opportunity. Members, do we want to allow an extra minute? Thank you. So if we look at that and we can, if we, by having these funds available and saying, okay, we, uh, we take this opportunity to improve uh, our tree canopy and, and, uh, and our planting program, we can use this, the, uh, you know, these funds towards that and really uh, get the uh, project ahead a lot faster. And if you really think that there is a lot of passion here and I appreciate that, but if we use that passion and say, we, uh, by using and, and putting projects together that uh, the community can also be involved in, we can even do a lot more with the same funds and, and uh, personally contribute to the improvement of our city and our tree line and also how we are going to uh, be able to sustain the increasing temperatures. So and that's kind of really, we're doing something we have to do. Um, and it's just that we're doing it for future generations, not this current ones. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Did you speak? So if you're right, Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to move a, a, an amendment, and that is that Council does not approve, and uh, it concludes at 17th of September 2019. That uh, is, Council does Councillor, not Councillor, I'm being um, advised that we can't. It's a direct negative. Um, all right. Um, I'm being advised approved, by Governor. I'll amend that. Approves in its capacity as having care and control of the land, the removal of the English elms. <laughs> in 2099. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Mayor. Does that meet your criteria? Is that government's criteria, Councillor Martin? Thank you very much, Lord Mayor. Look, last week, 10,000 people gathered in the streets of Adelaide. Uh, Sorry, I just, Councillor Moran, did you second that? I'm looking for a seconder. She did. Um, let me remind you again, Lord Mayor, last week, 10,000 people gathered in the streets of Adelaide to draw attention to climate change, which is a man-made impact on climate. Uh, which is to some extent ameliorated by reducing carbon outputs and putting more oxygen into the, uh, the atmosphere. Tonight, um, Lord Mayor, your council, uh, Team Adelaide here, the majority of the, the members of this council. Councillor Martin, will... are you talking to the motion? I am. We, I'm going to keep everybody to talk to the motion tonight. Well, We're the... going to talk to the motion and not to the man, all right? I'm not talking to a man, I'm talking to a team. Councillor Martin, if you wish to speak to the motion, please continue. Now, uh, this, uh, this vote that will follow, and it will be a vote to cut the trees down, believe me, that is the way it works in this council. There is a majority block, that's what happens. This vote will just serve the interests of the state government, Renewal SA, Francis' uh, son, who's the Councillor minister. Councillor Martin, can you please debate the motion? If not, I will ask you to take your chair. Well, I'm just alerting no, you to the stakeholders. No, you're not. You're actually, being, it is. All right, well, look, let's have, let's have a look how we got to this point. We got to this point by ignoring those 10,000 people who took to the streets of Adelaide last week. We've ignored the petition, which is signed by 1,500 people from around Australia saying, please save these trees. And we've even ignored our own staff report, our own arborist who says, these trees are worth yeah. it. Yeah. It's no wonder that our staff think we're a mob of dropkicks. Seriously, we are ignoring professional advice for the sake of political expediency. Now, our staff say the trees are healthy, the trees are growing, they say that they will live for another generation or more, and everybody knows that elms live for hundreds and hundreds of years. 
Lord Mayor, they sustain local fauna. You can see possums, birds, and other wildlife in them every day. And moreover, they're putting Members more... of the gallery, please, if you... I actually do need you to be quiet when you're in the chamber. Thank Lord you, Councillor. Lord Mayor, Councilor. they are putting more oxygen into the environment than a whole batch of new trees. And that actually is in the report. Lord Mayor, um, I would ask for another couple of minutes uh, and I will Members. Do Members, show of hands, sorry. Thank you, yes. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, these trees are also safe. And I mentioned this because someone mentioned fallaciously, someone mentioned fallaciously that they were a risk, that somebody would die because a branch would fall on them. Now, that is scandalous. And indeed, our arborist says that there is a one in 100,000 chance of a branch falling on someone in the city. Now, I've listened to uh, one speaker, and I am sure I'm going to listen to many others uh, with their speeches about what a, a difficult decision this is, how hard it is to reach this decision about preserving these trees. Um, Lord Mayor, that is not a hard decision. It is a ridiculous decision. Now, it is a melodrama, in fact, because the evidence says these trees should be protected. And if you have the right compass, if you are listening to the community, you can come to no other conclusion than preserving these trees for the future. reiterate what we said before um, they are lovely uh, avenue of elm trees it's quite different from the um, other part of um, north terrace i can understand the other side of the coin and uh, as uh, my son's frequently pointed out i did also vote to remove as he did um, some rather scrappy trees down the other end um, i think i was wrong to do that um, because i was convinced as a before that, that um, it, the plans could not have been altered. But I was disappointed when I looked at the new trees, which were much better than those trees, but not as good as the elm trees, that they were planted in roughly exactly the same spot. Uh, um, landscape architects like to put their own stamp on it. It's annoying to have to work around somebody else's work. That hundreds of thousands of people managed to traverse that North Terrace entrance to our busiest public hospital. And I'm sure that the uh, landscape art architect, Mr. Hayter, who is probably one of our leading, could find another one if we put our foot down. Uh, our arborist said they were 20 plus years. This council went to ask for more, inf more information. It reiterated 20 plus years. Now in an arborist talk, um, it's a bit like cancer diagnosis. It's a cure if you live for five years, but hopefully you'll live for 30. They don't, they don't give longer predictions. 20 plus is the maximum they give because that's as far ahead generationally as they can see. The trees are worth $665,000 in the Melbourne unit. I don't know where Council Clonoll got $2 million. It would be at least 50 years till those trees actually got to $660,000. Um, we have had a climate ch declared a climate change emergency. This is we've put men on the moon. I am sure that these trees could be incorporated into a new plan. Elm trees go straight down. They have tap roots. Those trees will have a long tap root straight into the river, the river, the river, the river Torrens basement. They will not be killed by paving around them. Goodness me, if that happened every street tree would die every time we relayed the road. There is no reason to do this. We are kowtowing to the government. Uh, as I said, I, I can see the logic on the other side, but it's false logic. You don't have to believe what the government comes and tells you, that these trees will die, the whole plan is up in arms. Get another landscape architect if this one can't work it out. But do not lose the trees. It makes a mockery of everything we've done. It makes a mockery of us calling for climate change, calling it a climate change emergency. We had spent hours looking at a strategic plan. It was all about how we wanted to become a green city. And the very first thing we do is okay the removal of a statuesque, majestic 
English style avenue. I know we will because the majority have spoken, but it is a shame and you don't have to say yes. Oh, sorry, Councillor Donovan. Likewise, I don't support the removal of the trees and uh, it actually stems back to something that was mentioned in the deputation, which, which is that it gives us the opportunity to rethink the master plan, which the point was made was approved back in uh, 2001, almost 20 years ago. And our ideas around urban planning have, have progressed significantly since then. And I think 20 years ago, we were very car centric. We were not thinking about the benefit of established trees. Now we understand the benefit of shaping our urban environment for moving people around for um, people in the environment rather than simply for moving cars through our urban environment. And I think this gives us the opportunity to rethink that master plan in terms of people movement, uh, pedestrians, cyclists, in terms of how to retain these trees for the both the beauty, the shade um, and the carbon benefits that they supply rather than simply proceeding with this current master plan, which may be easier, it may be convenient, uh, but is, is not in alignment with contemporary urban planning uh, design. Thank you. Thank you. You're asking me to sum up, Lord Mayor, or would you like someone else yes. to do it? No, you can sum up. Okay, I'm happy to sum up. Um, look, Lord Mayor, this is a clear-cut decision. Uh, there is no excuse for chopping these trees down. And uh, I, I might add, uh, I was uh, I was looking at Facebook, as I do occasionally, and, and I saw a quote that actually um, sums up this situation quite nicely. In the context of the demonstrations and the, uh, the signatures we've had, many of them from young people, um, there was a, a quote which said, um, you know you're in trouble when uh, young people start to behave like adults and the so-called adults like us behave like children. And to cut these trees down would be just a crime against future generations. They must be safe. Members will now vote on the amendment. Those in favour? Those against? That is the uh, list. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call the vision. So I'll call the vote again. We're voting for the amendment. Those in favour? Those against? Division. That is lost. Councillors, a division has been called on the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment, to please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Donovan, Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran. Members, that takes us back to the substantive. Are there any further discussion on the substantive? If not, I'll go to the move to sum up. Councillor Knoll. Yes, thank you. I mean, I do appreciate all the emotion, etc., um, and, uh, and uh, certainly uh, you know the desire. But we, we we've got to think practically as well. And I would have to say that the council will be able to do a lot with the with the money that we can put forward to actually doing real work, and rather than trying to sustain uh, some trees that ha do still have a limited lifespan, and we can do a lot more imaginative things with that a lot more effectively, and really deliver. Uh, in a greenhouse abatement. Members, we'll put this to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. <laughs> Councillors, a division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Canole, Councillor Abraham Zadeh, Councillor Ho, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Carer, Councillor Hyde and Councillor Kuros. Thank you, members. That takes us to recommendation two, which is the East Scooter trial update. I'll look for a mover. Deputy Lord Mayor and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. We'll pause for a moment, members.
Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to him? Yeah, look, I just had a couple of quick questions just with regards to the um, uh, uh, to the EOI process. Um, just to be able to provide some information, um, maybe a question through the CEO, if that's okay. So it's my understanding uh, with this arrangement that the um, uh, the new licences or permits will be issued as of the 31st of January under this current arrangement. Through the chair, sorry, Lord Mayor. Uh, Clinton, can you respond? Uh, through the chair, yes, that's correct. Yep. And when do we look at the um, EOI process to be conclusive? When do we know when that will, will conclude? Is that by the end of December or is it in January? Uh, through the chair, uh, we're looking to conclude the EOI process before Christmas this okay. year in order to prepare for a January 31st rollover from the existing permit to a new permit arrangement. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak to him? No, I do have um, a couple of questions because I um, don't have the benefit of the committee last week. Um, how long are you expecting to take? I mean, it's one thing to talk about the EOI, but the actual analysis, the results of the trial that we've been undertaking for you know, the better part of all this year, um, how long is that analysis going to take? CEO? Clinton again, thanks. Uh, through the chair, um, the committee report does contain information around um, the outcomes of the trial to date. So you're saying you've done all your analysis then, is that? Uh, there is some further analysis to do in the development of some guidelines, which yeah. will help to um, form the EOI and also help the new proponents um, next year in terms of operating to a new set of guidelines. And that's what you're working on with the LGA? You're doing some policy work with them, as I understand, to work on those uh, guidelines and, and potentially assisting other councils in rolling out similar. Currently working on uh, our own trial, but we are also, um, uh, if this motion is successful, we're going to um, deliberate with other councils, uh, local surrounding councils as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thank you, members. Any further debate? If not, I'll go back to the mover, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us to recommendation number three, the men's shed project. And I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. And a seconder. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hyde. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Hyde? Members? If not, I'll go back to the mover. Deputy Lord Mayor? Members, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, recommendation four is the City of Adelaide submission, Local Nuisance and Litter Control Act 2016 minor review. Uh, if I could have someone move. Thank you, Deputy Little Mayor and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, Deputy Little Mayor, did you wish to speak to him? Councillor Abraham today. Members. If not, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Members, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, that takes us to recommendation five, which is the Adelaide 500 2020 declaration consultation. And I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, and a seconder, Councillor Canal. Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak to Councillor Canal? Members, Councillor Martin. Just briefly, Lord Mayor, um, look, I will oppose this. No three-day or four-day event in this city should prevent uh, the citizens and residents of uh, this city accessing their parklands for a period of up to five months, particularly when two months of that five months is associated with dismantling things like seating. Um, I will oppose it. I know it will be lost, but it seems to me that we've come somehow come to the point where we just accept this every year, that it's okay to shut down a part of parklands for such a, a minor event um, in, in this city. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Hyde? What Councillor Martin said. Members? Not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Councillor Abraham today. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. 
takes us to item 9.2, which is the advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority. Um, we'll take this in one. We have two parts of the advice, the community land management plan for Rumble Park and the sport, sports lighting in Gladys Elphick Park. If I could have someone move. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor and a seconder. Councillor Knoll, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Knoll, members. Quick question. Yes, um, Councillor Martin. Lord Mayor, um, will the uh, the sports lighting proposal be coming to council at some stage? I can answer that, but did you want to answer that, Sia? Through Lord Mayor, Amy, is that correct? Can you just come forward to, to clarify, thanks? Okay. Yep, I understand that's the case. Is that right? Just yes, that's fine. <laughs> and nod from across the chamber. Um, are there any other questions or debate? If not, I'll go to the mover to sum up. It was actually Councillor Abraham that did it. Oh, it is DLM. Sorry, my apologies. I'm looking at my um, wrong piece of paper. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, if I can ask for the vote, those in favour, those against. So sorry, Councillor Martin Moran, I didn't see you vote. That was just for the advice of Ampla. Yes. Thank you. That is carried. Um, now, members, because we do have several uh, guests of the public with us in the uh, in the gallery this evening. I'm going to bring forward one of the motions on notice, which is 15.1, uh, which is a motion by Councillor Kouros, the motion uh, to revoke part two of the North Adelaide uh, on-street parking review. Councillor Kouros, and I will, would you like to move your motion? And I'll have a seconder for Deputy Lord Mayor. So I'll just take it as read. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, back in um, March 2019 of this year, I took guidance from senior councillors when this motion was brought in, and we voted to agree for the parking restrictions and uh, our 12 month trial to begin. However, less than three months into this trial, it's clear that this is not working, and it's causing unnecessary stress to nurses, teachers, businesses, and their, their employees, and to the residents. The motion I propose tonight is to reverse the unrestricted parking around the areas adjacent to the parklands and to begin the process of engaging with the stakeholders on the, on the current parking controls in their own streets. The 28 day period will allow administration to engage directly with the community and to provide direct feedback with precinct by precinct rather than a blanket approach. North Adelaide is unique um, and no two streets are the same. And I feel that the community have been impacted severely and to continue will be creating more, more stress for the council. Of course, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, so I need you to speak to the first part of the motion first, which is the revocation. Oh. And then the second part of the motion, if the revo once the revocation is through. My okay, so um, the revoking of it. And so the revoking of it is a, a process that I would like to go through to be able to give back relief back to the area and to give back uh, relief to the community um, as a whole. Um, I feel that the parking trial is not working um, and uh, evidence has stated that through the survey that I've conducted, um, that it is um, causing stress to residents and to the community at large, especially to the nurses and to the teachers and to the community overall, as we have heard tonight. Um, so the idea uh, to revoke it, or the motion before you to revoke it, is uh, to um, eliminate the trial and to bring relief back into the area. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Members? If not, I'll ask Councillor Kouros to sum up. I'll ask, ask Councillor Kouros to sum up. Thank you, members. Those in favour of the revocation? Those against? That is carried. Um, now that takes us to uh, the second part of the motion. Councillor Kouros, I look for a seconder. Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Sorry about that. Um, didn't realise. Um, so uh, basically, um, what I'm wanting to, re 
do with the um, motion, second part of the motion, is to uh, reinstate the bays with the unrestricted parking um, where which we removed. So that will bring back approximately, as administration pointed out, 340 bays immediately into the area. Then from there, after uh, have a 28 day period in which um, the administration can go on a precinct to precinct basis to um, work with the stakeholders, residences, businesses, etc., to how the parking trial has affected them. And so then we'll be able to get a clear snapshot on um, the um, parking in um, North Adelaide. Um, what I'm hoping to achieve um, from this is um, obviously to, you know, to speed up the whole process in um, rather than dragging this out for 12 months. But I think with this um, approach, we'll be able to um, we'll be able to speak directly to all the residents and all the businesses with precinct by precinct, as I as I uh, as I said, and that way we will be able to lift more of the car parking, I believe. Because with the survey that I put out there, 85% of people that, that I had surveyed do not support the new parking trial. 66% um, of them are residents and 20% are commuters. Now these commuters are people that work in North Adelaide. They actually are not commuters. Well, there would be a small percentage, but we don't know what that is, that park and, and ride, transit commuters. But most of them are the commuters that come and work in North Adelaide. And we, we, would, we don't want to put any strain on the economy of North Adelaide because we need these commuters to come in freely to be able to eat, um, shop in North Adelaide and support the economy there. Um, so I want to move forward and support the community and supporting the community. I feel that this is a great way forward to um, be able to fast track it rather than wait for another 12 months. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Yeah. Members? Thank you, Councillor Martin. Look, Lord Mayor, I, uh, I am uh, disappointed with this motion because um, it does create a conflict, uh, a conflict with which uh, Councillor Moran and uh, Councillor Abiad, as long serving councillors, are aware of. And that is the tension between residents and uh, commuters and businesses. Now, I, I understand and I have enormous sympathy for nurses and schools, and I do believe that we can work through the complexities associated with their needs in the parking trial, which has just been uh, rescinded uh, and replaced with pretty much what is the law of the jungle. That is to say, 340 spaces will be reinstated and they will be available from seven o'clock in the morning and it's first in, first served. Nurses won't get them. They won't get those parks. They'll be gone. They'll be with the commuters as they were before we began, we began this process earlier this year. And look, I, I just want to make it clear that, uh, and I am aware of uh, Councillor Kouros' Facebook uh, poll, and indeed, look, I did a similar one in the North Adelaide village. I spoke to at least 30 people, and most of them were very supporting of the current scheme. But look, I've received a lot of emails, and I think it's important that Council understands the tensions that are there. Um, one of the leading businessmen in North Adelaide says, shows a real lack of understanding of North Adelaide issues from the Council. If Kouros proceeds with a motion, it will definitely be a step backwards. We have seen a vast improvement. A bloody disgrace, says another person. Another one says, I and my neighbours are amazed by this. Does the council live in North Adelaide? There's been a dramatic change in our street. We can now get a park. Now, this is important, Lord Mayor. This is what people are saying. And I want everyone to understand that there are two perspectives and that it requires some balance. Um, another ratepayer says, I can't see a solution until the next election. Um, I'm having trouble understanding Team Adelaide making mischief. Another one says, I've seen the draft motion and comprehend the train route that's being contemplated. Uh, another one says, I must say the changes seem to be working well in my street. I feared that was going to happen. Everything was working well in here. Crazy twilight world you and North Adelaide are now trapped in. Well, it goes on and on like that. But it's clear that there is this tension and what's being proposed is merely going to exacerbate that. And moreover, I think there's a real risk that we're going to alienate the people with whom we've worked on this for three years, rather than working through the complexities. 
Now, I remind everyone, we, we mailed, we sent letters to 6,000 addresses in North Adelaide, and that shaped what we agreed upon. We had six public meetings, which were um, uh, uh, moderated by professional consultants, and we have spent... Members, we, are you happy to allow another minute? I'm... Or were you just finishing up? I'm finishing up. Okay. Um, we have spent about a quarter of a million dollars, in my estimate, on this whole process. And what we're doing is throwing the baby out with the bathwater, instead of working through the complexities to find the solutions that are there. I very much regret that we've come to this stage. Councillor Martin. Councillor Hyde. I just had a question. Um, out of those 6,000 letters that were sent out, what was the response rate to, to that? I'm assuming there was a survey sent out with it. CEO? So, we will move. Vanessa, can you help us with that answer? Yes. Just a bold uh, figure. Um, through the presiding member, um, we did share some of that at the committee last week. Sorry, Council Hyde. Um, um, so there were yeah, 5,826 letters posted to residents, and we had oh sorry, my new glasses don't work. Um, we had feedback from approximately um, I'm just trying to add them up here about 150 residents. Um, the others were the other feedback was from North Adelaide workers. And, and about 20 from commuters, city commuters. Right. Okay. Do you going to start the clock? Um, I, I would just like to highlight that that's almost statistically insignificant. Um, uh, and in fact, uh, having seen the results of Council of Course, it's not a Facebook poll, um, uh, but it was an actual poll that was delivered to all those residents in North Adelaide. Rather, the opportunity to participate was delivered to them, um, uh, and uh, of which I, I understand there were actually more respondents to that um, than our original survey that was actually sent out. I would, I would much rather rely on Council of Chorus's data as opposed to some friends or neighbours of ECC'd into an email um, and then read out in the chamber. So I commend Council of Chorus for having the courage to um, uh, to stand up and and uh, and make this uh, make this decision to say, look, um, Council got it wrong, and we're now revisiting that decision. I think that it's been pretty clear, and it's been uh, not just clearly made to us. Um, uh, by, by those affected who are also with us today, um, uh, but also in the media. This has been a topic of ongoing um, uh, controversy um, and uh, uh, commend Councillor Corus for having the courage to stand up. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, look, I can see how this might look from um, somebody that's come recently. Um, we answered a call from our community um, as the Lord Mayor knows, that went on for some years. Our free bus service got more efficient, the bigger buses, um, uh, more popular and so forth. And we had um, a lot of particularly older people who couldn't, whose friends couldn't visit them for years because they couldn't get a park close enough to their house because of the all day parkers. Now the unlimited area is around the parklands and that just virtually became a car park for the hospitals and some of the institutions. Now, I agree that the institutions and the hospitals should be accommodated, and that's why I um, was going to move a motion to give nurses permits, but the report was so negative I pulled it, um, and I also supported uh, fuels. What, what we brought in, and just I want to reiterate this, this, this didn't just pop out of our head, this was something that all the council voted for because all the council had been approached frequently by people saying, I can't even park in my street, there are all day parkers there all day. Um, and just on a side issue, uh, we heard from the Women's and Children's Hospital that said that the afternoon nurses who want to have parks at one o'clock um, have uh, lost their parks. I can assure you that those parks will now be taken up by all day parkers. So when the nurses arrive at one o'clock, the nine to fivers would have parked there. Because of the, um, the um, media, that's, people are very well aware that this will come back to North Adelaide. So the nurses won't do any better than they have already. Those park, parks will be away. Um, so as I said, we answered a need to bring in a parking exhibit. Phil and I weren't very happy 
with it. And we said that, in fact, before the election, Phil tried to, um, Councillor Martin tried to put some extras in. We felt that having any unlimited was silly, and that's a lot of complaints I've got around my area because all the nurses, everybody cramming into a, an ever small pond, whereas we wanted them to be given all override permits so they can park anywhere they, they like. That didn't happen. It didn't happen because we weren't, our advice wasn't followed. We voted, as uh, Councillor Abbott has pointed out, we voted for it and we initiated it. And he voted for it too, because um, he thought it was a good idea. But we thought, giving such a long trial, that we would adjust it as we went along. Now, of course, new councils don't, don't necessarily up with what the other councils decided to do. Um, so when we kept trying to adjust it, we were told, no, 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 you have to wait to get to the trial. But that was never the purpose. We could have given all the nurses permits and they'd definitely get parks. We could have given St Aloysius an allocation. We could have given uh, the workers an allocation and they could have put a sticker on their windscreen and overrode it. This is just opening it up again. I live on the parklands, the very streets that we had a, can I have another minute? Members, thank you. Uh, the very streets that we said when David Plumridge was here, we should have lovely open vistas uh, so that the people driving through can see the parklands. Um, I can see the parklands most of the time because the school, I, I'm totally parked out. In my street now, um, I always parked out. I've got unlimited down the side and a bit limited there. Before that came in, I was just a sea of cars. Anybody driving past couldn't have seen the parklands. Anyway, that's a bit of a side issue. Um, but our idea was to help the nurses and, and Phil wanted to bring the business ones forward, but that was um, argued against. So we've kind of, you're right, this is very flawed, incredibly flawed, but we were going to suck it and see, so to speak, and adjust it as we went along. Um, I, not to be critical of the administration, but they didn't understand what we were saying. They didn't understand that the residence cars would all fit in because we actually made more on street parks by getting rid of the all day parkers. So we could have been more generous with our residents, but we weren't more generous. They're up in arms, the business is up in arms, but don't blame the initiators of this. It was a good trial and that's why we voted for it. This is throwing it all out again. And of course, I'm happy to hand it over to um, Councillor Kuros. She now um, can take the responsibility for doing a new one. Uh, <laughs> good, good luck. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Just a couple of brief uh, comments, Lord Mayor. Look, firstly, um, as Councillor Moran said, and as Councillor Martin said before, this has been an ongoing process, even through the previous term of council to get to where this is. I have been um, involved very closely with changes of parking in the East End, in the Western side of the city, and there is no winners and losers, there's always losers and losers, uh, and it is always very, very challenging. And as we've heard tonight, and we've heard through the many emails, surveys, respondents to all sides of different councillors, uh, it is always the people that are disenchanted with an outcome that tend to be localising their concerns as well. Um, but what we've heard that's been pretty clear, and I know that wasn't the intent of Councillor Martin when he moved, uh, the motion originally uh, for this to occur. Uh, but these matters do arise as a result. And I think what we're dealing with today is an opportunity to be able to reset a little bit back, um, give the 28 day process at which we can communicate with constituents. Uh, also have the opportunity for the administration to spend time street on street to determine what some of the challenges are in that area. And uh, we did say we want to pilot some of that program in North Adelaide, because I know that in the south part of the city, there were similar concerns. There were also similar concerns on the western side of the central ward with residents in that area as well, where some of their streets are always also full of cars. But what we're hearing specifically today, um, and look, I know I'm very sympathetic to this in the sense with the nurses and also um, um, the schools, uh, but the reality remains as well is through planning, we need to be able to target some of those issues. I mean, council cannot solve all the problems. And the minute we give a group permits, we're pretty much taking away from business. The minute we give business permits, we're taking away from residents. It's always the sort of give from, take from one, give to the other. And that's the challenge we're constantly going to find ourselves undergoing. Um, I think we have an opportunity through this though, with the rescission, to be able to at least reset the agenda halfway through and to be able to follow up uh, with people in the area and get that feedback and also the opportunities through, I'm sure, for Councillor uh, Martin and Councillor Moran to be able to plug in through that process and get some of the outcomes where they'll understand a bit 
closer on the streets what some of the best practice aspects will be required for the community up there as well but look I, i'd like to i hope that councillor moran and councillor martin can support this because there is an opportunity there in item three where it talks about requesting the administration to review the feedback and consider amending parking alteration to support local stakeholders in line with on-street parking policy and associated operating guidelines. I think that's where the opportunity lies uh, for councillors to be able to provide that feedback and for the community to be able to provide that feedback to be able to implement that change that needs to be potentially personalised or tailored the specific streets in uh, in North Adelaide. But look, I hear Councillor Moran saying, let's give permits to uh, hospital uh, staff and nurses, and I'm hearing the nurses and hospital staff saying they don't want permits and it's not gonna work. And it, it's very contentious. Some work for others, some work for others. So it's just, I think it's something that we need to consider. And I think this will give us the opportunity to consider. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, Yeah, uh, just thinking while we see through this uh, this motion, I mean, you know, I can appreciate the good intentions there were with trying to, uh, you know, alleviate issues when, you know, when those that, that complain uh, continues to do so until they find some resolution. And I can appreciate that, uh, you know, in doing that, sometimes uh, the unexpected happens. But when you think a little bit around that, the residents did really take up the opportunity to take permits because there were, uh, you know, most of them, I think, were left uh, uh, untaken. Um, it didn't actually, to, am I correct? Uh, no, 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 they were refused. They were refused. Sorry, I think if you're asking that question, I'll ask the question of administration. Thanks, Minister. Um, through the presiding member, if you're referring to the trial permits, Councillor Canole, um, yeah, 35 of those were issued under the criteria of the permits. Okay, so out of 1,200, that's a lot of rejections, if there was that many. Um, now, but it, the point here is that it doesn't decrease the need um, for, you know, the cars were still there, the, 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 the suburb is still full. So if we just look at that and say, increasing the complexity by creating more and more permits, permits have costs involved, permits have, you know, you have to apply, you have to, there's so many things you're doing. Uh, rather than taking that as, as your first port of call, it is better to step back and reassess it and then uh, see which is the most effective way and efficient way to do this. Because you're trying to, in, in a sense, you're not trying to create, create another cost burden. Of course, it can be an income stream, but uh, these sorts of things do have a very negative connotation with the public anyway. Um, but it is about just resetting it and let's look at it. And then now, and I have to say that it's, it's possible that this uh, uh, trial may have now brought people out and, and now, you know, that they are now going to contribute and, and put their point of view and, and so we do come up to a solution that could potentially uh, shape itself into something that, uh, you know, the, a greater number of the community can be happy with. And I think it's just, uh, uh, well, it, it's, I'm sorry for the pain for all those that have been involved. Thank you. You had a question, Councillor Martin? Uh, yes, Lord Mayor, thank you. Um, with reference to the new permits, um, as the mover of the motion, it was my intention, and Councillor Moran's is the seconder, that permits be issued to all residents of the City of Adelaide residing in North Adelaide, but the administration applied a criteria that excluded which dwellings? Was it strata? All strata townhouses, all strata apartments. Is that correct? Thank you. Thanks, um, through the presiding member, we um, excluded um, multi dwellings over beyond 1976 that were built after 1976 and apartments in, which is aligned to the existing residential permit criteria. And, and did the administration understand it was the intention of the mover and the seconder that they be granted to residents? Um, through the chair, we we interpreted the what we understood was the intent of council. And how many people would have been excluded from permits, knowing that there are how many apartments? The figures were provided. I can't remember. Was it eight hundred? Nine hundred. You can take that on notice if you don't have the data. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry, members. If there's no more speakers, I'll go back. Sorry, Councillor Donovan. Just a quick question, actually, the uh, point five, do we have a rough estimate of the cost that will be incurred? Sam? Um, through the presiding member, just to clarify the question, the cost of the North Adelaide trial? The cost of 
the user point five approved such funds that will be required. So roughly what funds would be required to implement point five? Oh, I beg your pardon. Um, so we, I would say it's approximately, so notification, implementation and parking utilisation surveys, it's potentially in the vicinity of $30,000. Councillor Abraham, sir. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just a quick question. The trial itself, how much did that cost, roughly? Thank you. Um, through the presiding member, um, I can I can give you the exact figure, but it's in the vicinity of one hundred and twenty thousand dollars for the for the North Adelaide parking trial. Okay, members, there's no more. I will go back to the mover to sum up, Councillor Corus. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Basically, what I'm asking here is um, to support, to bring back 340 bays initially, and then thereafter, for administration to spend 28 days, just 28 days, to speak to all the stakeholders that currently have been affected by the parking controls. This way, that way, residents can speak directly and, and businesses and institutions, etc., directly with administration and provide us with direct feedback to what is happening in this street. So I believe that that is basically what we're going to be doing over the 12 months anyway, in incre incrementally every three months, but we're condensing it in that 28 day period. But in saying, um, uh, in the response to the survey, sorry, in response to my survey, um, I have had a lot of feedback from residents and they're telling me things like affects this parking trial has affected my family and friends to visit. Um, there never was a problem in the first place. Cre creating problems when there were none. Some control was necessary, but I believe this is over the top. The charges are discriminatory and against long standing members of the North Adelaide community. As residents, I want to support the schools and hospitals and these restrictions are causing too much stress. I certainly feel that this decision has let us down and is wasting ratepayers' time. Can I, shall I go on? Because I have got about over 200 people Please. that have commented Please. about this parking trial from residents not working. You're, not sum, working. you're summing up, Councillor Corus. So basically, it is just a, a way forward to be able to support all the, the community of North Adelaide and to be able to have direct feedback with administration. Thank you. Thank you. Members, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Division. division. Councillors, a division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today. Sorry, Councillor Canole, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Ho, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Kara, Councillor Hyde, and Councillor Kuros. Members, so we will now go back to the uh, normal order of the agenda and we go to item 10, which is the Lord Mayor's report. So, uh, my report dated the 24th of September. Um, it is a pleasure to report on some of the highlights since my last update to Council. On behalf of Council, I attended the funeral of former City of Adelaide Councillor Tony Williamson and conveyed our condolences to the family and it was good to see so many members of the former council there. In terms of community connection, I attended and spoke at a COTA function at, to celebrate the success of their SALA and launched their 2019 ZestFest Active Ageing Program and took part in the official opening of the Anglicare's new disability respite care facility on South Terrace um, and was accompanied by uh, Councillor Donovan. I attended and spoke at the North Adelaide Precinct Association, AGM, as well as the Southwest Association Community Meeting, which was held on waste. I presided over a citizenship ceremony with 50 new citizens from 25 countries, and I thank Councillor Sims for being the MC on the day. Uh, Lord Merrill's receptions were held to celebrate Dr. Richard Harris, South Australian of the Year 2019 and Dual Australian of the Year 2019, and also for the 2019 Primary Schools Music Festival. I also had the opportunity to celebrate the contribution of our wonderful staff at the recent City of Adelaide Awards. I spoke at a number of events, including the Australian Property Institute Conference about major projects in Adelaide and Council's Design for Life platform. 
the 20th Trina National Symposium, the AHA Women and Hotels South Australian Conference, the Feast Festival Program Launch, and attended the State Opera 2020 Program Launch. I also gave a presentation was a panel member for the Australian Chamber, sorry, the American Chamber of Commerce luncheon alongside Chief Entrepreneur Jim Wally and Dep um, Department of Program Cabinet Head Jim McDowell. I also spoke at the Future Forum, an initiative of architect Dino Vrinius, uh, founded in partnership with South Australian chapter of the Australian Institute of Architects on the top of, topic of wellness by design in the city of Adelaide. And last week, I joined the Council of Capital City Lord Mayor's delegation in Canberra, where we continued our strong advocacy to the federal government for specific action on housing and homelessness. Thank you. If I could have someone move the report be accepted. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, seconded by Councillor Knoll. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, that takes us, members, to item 11.1 reports from council members. Um, if I ask for someone to move, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder, thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, are there any comments? Did you wish to speak to it, Deputy Lord Mayor? Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Just, uh, I've attended um, on uh, your behalf a East End Adelaide Precinct uh, Group AGM meeting, uh, at which the City of Adelaide was presented uh, with a precinct support award for the Adelaide East End Unleashed program for the season of 1819. On behalf of the fellow councillors, of Councillor Sims attended as well. Uh, I'd like to uh, extend their gift to you and to the City of Adelaide. Thank Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, were there any other comments that um, members wish to make about the Council's report? If not, I will go to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Members, those in favour? Those against? That's carried. That takes us to item 12, reports for Council. Um, we have 12.1, the Community Land Management Plan, Rymel Park. If I could have a mover. Thank you, DLM. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Right? Councillor Hyde. Councillor Martin. Yeah, quick question, Lord Mayor, for the administration. Um, on page 34, um, the pocket park is designated as a stolen generation place of reflection. Um, why are we still allowing this area to be used as a car park as well? See you. Mayor Lord Mayor Clinton, are you able to answer that? Uh, through the presiding member, um, if possible, I might refer that question to Martin Cook, the executive here tonight. Ah. Martin, if you could come down. Uh, through the chair, um, there are some considerations regarding access to the um, ETSA, ETSA substation and the Tandanya Cultural Institution. So that involves some short term parking. Uh, but can, can we have a look at that? I mean, we are creating a memorial for the Ghana people that is also a car park. Is it not possible just to have the access but to do away with the parking? Uh, that would require some investigation, but the car parking is some distance to the north of the wow. identified site. Thank you. Members? Councillor Donovan. Uh, just a quick question. It was brought to my attention late this afternoon that there's a lack of adequate bicycle hoops, bike parking uh, in this area at present, and it's anticipated that there will be more travel to the area with the upgrade. Can we look at that? Can we include that in some way at this point? Look at an increase in the in the bike parking. Yes. Great. Thanks. Um, would encourage any feedback because the plan is out for consultation at the moment. Great. Members. 
If not, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Members, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, I now take us to 12.2, which is the Building Fire Safety Committee membership, and I ask for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Moran, and second it. Councillor Martin, you happy to second that? Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? No, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Martin. No, Lord Mayor. Members? If not, I'll go to the mover, Councillor Moran. No, Lord Mayor. Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Takes us to 12.3, which is the Adelaide Parklands Authority sitting fees uh, disbursement. I look for a mover, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to this? Councillor Knoll. Members? Councillor Martin. Yeah, Lord Mayor, look, I just wanted to congratulate you on uh, this gesture. You, you are giving up your fees. Um, for the city on Apple. Uh, I'm not sure from the papers whether it's backdated or it's prospective, um, but uh, thank you for that. That is a fine gesture. Um, I note also uh, that this change to the rules allows also the other elected member on the uh, uh, Apple uh, group to <coughs> donate his fees. Um, to the Adelaide Parklands Arts, which is indeed a, a, a great thing to support. I, I, is it um, in, in your knowledge? Do you understand that that is the case? That the other member is going to donate his fees? That is not a question to ask of me, Councillor Martin. All, all members of APLA are invited or are able to do that, and it's uh, it is to answer your further question. It is from when I was appointed and the charter changed. I was uh, I actually donate my fees back to pretty much all boards that I'm on. Well, I commit as as a point of you know clarification because I know no, you're I, very interested in this, well, and Mayor, so I just, I just um, you know my... I'll bring in my donations list for you, Councillor Martin. I'm no, sure I'm... you'll find it most interesting. No, I don't need that, Lord Mayor. I'm just filled with admiration. Standing. Thank you. It's very uh, kind of you to um, say. Uh, I think the Parklands Prize is is a very worthy cause, and I was pleased to do it. Uh, may, may I ask, I know that Councillor Hyde is very concerned about cutting perks. Will you ask him to donate his fee to the party? No, I haven't Council? asked any. I actually put that in place in case anyone else need to do it. I would have to take a separate report in. So it is open to all council members to donate at any time. Whether they actually would like to donate their council fees, they may do that as well. Well, Lord Mayor, uh, look, uh, perhaps I'll let you consult with Councillor Hyde. No, I was talking to, sorry, office. everyone in the room. You're very welcome to donate your you. sitting fees to the Apple Park or the Parklands Art Prize. I think it would be much appreciated. Uh, any other speakers on this motion? If not, I'll go back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us to 12.4, progress of motions by elected members. I look for a mover, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Moran, seconder. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Uh, uh, no, you can't do that, yeah? Did you wish to speak? No, no Councillor no. Moran? No. Thank you. <laughs> Back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Members, those in favour? Those <laughs> against? Thank you, that is carried. 12.5 is the quarterly Ford procurement report. I look for a mover. Uh, Councillor Martin, second Deputy Lord uh, Hang on, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm moving a, a variation, a very a motion. I had Councillor Martin first. I, I'm moving. <coughs> Sorry, I had Councillor Martin first, Deputy Lord Mayor, so I'll just go to Councillor Martin, a variation. And it's a very simple uh, addition. It says, and resolves to call in um, bus shelters and advertising. And it doesn't need a full stop after 2019, just add results to call in bus shelters and advertising. Look for a seconder, Councillor Moran. Uh, Lord Mayor, look, um, uh, this is just a, a very simple governance issue. At page 83 of our papers, uh, and this has come up before, we're required to approve all contracts that exceed $4 million. Anything under $4 million is within the, uh, the CEO's authority. There are two amounts here exceeding that $4 million, one for $4.8 million and one for $9 million. 
Now the $4.8 million one, which is for an electrical panel service, um, is rated by the administration as tier three, meaning it's not critical or important enough for us to be concerned. However, that $9 million contract for bus shelters has been classified by the administration as tier one, high risk category. Um, it is more than double the CEO's delegation, but more importantly, um, it does refer to um, issues related to bus shelter furniture and advertising. And my intention is to ask if we may be brought into the loop on that at some point. Um, I might ask the CEO to talk to them. It's very well, Mayor. Just to clarify, my delegation, I reduced, offered to reduce it back to one million from four million. So just to be clear on that, Good. I don't see any problem returning this matter to council though for consideration. Looking for any other thoughts on that? So you're happy to do that if that's the wish of council. Thank you, Lord Mayor. It's only a matter of, of governance and because it's a particularly sensitive one, that is screens, advertising and bus shelters, I think it's a good idea for us to be across it. Thank you. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? Members? If not, I'll ask for a vote. Those in favour of the amendment? Those against? That's carried. That becomes a substantive. No, we don't need to because it's... Okay. Okay, sorry. Um, that takes us to 12.6, City of Adelaide Multicultural Hub. I look for a mover, Councillor Abraham today, and a seconder, Councillor Canole, Councillor Abraham today. Did you wish to speak to that? Uh, is that for my right hand? Does Councillor Cross yeah, the chamber for this or not? Do I need to? Now you do, yes. Thank you, yes. Sorry. Lord Mayor, just a point of order. Can Councillor Kuros no, uh, declare a conflict? As a point of order, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Yes, before you leave the chamber, you have to say what the uh, what the conflict of interest is. A material conflict. Uh, I'd like to declare a material conflict. Uh, because, it's because it's your travel. Because it's benefits. Yeah. Members, Councillor Abraham today, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, just briefly, Lord Mayor, um, we know that Councillor Kouros moved a, uh, a motion some time ago in relation to a multicultural hub here in Adelaide. Uh, it's great to uh, uh, to give her that opportunity to, to visit Melbourne, and I'm uh, very much looking forward to, to the report. Members? No? Um, if I can also just add that uh, the invitation actually came originally from Grace Portalisi to myself and to Councillor Kouros, and I was happy to support her uh, representing me for that visit to uh, Melbourne. Um, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham today to sum up. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Members, uh, I go to questions on notice, and the question that I have is on Christmas. Councillor Kouros, are you happy to take the question as read? Are you happy to take the response as read? Thank you very much. Very well, Mayor. If I could just clarify, there was an omission. Uh, we forgot, we didn't forget, we just failed to, to provide information related to the RMMA, and they are a separate subsidiary, as you would know. So we will just adjust that information and send it back out. Thank you. Um, that takes us to item 14. Councillors, are there any questions without notice? 
If not, I will go to uh, item number 15. We have dealt with item 15.1. That takes us to item 15.2. Councillor Kouros, the floor is yours. So I'll just, do we have a second now? I have a second now. Councillor Albrecht, today. So I'll just take it as read. I'll take you to take it as read. You can take um, it. Basically, I don't want to go into a long-winded debate over this, and uh, I was um, I put this forward as a motion because it's a fairly detailed, a lot of questions attached to it. Um, so we've agreed as a council to go ahead with a needs analysis report and that we're in regards to the Adelaide Aquatic Centre. However, there are a lot of questions that the public have been asking, the community have been asking me in regards to the history of the um, Aquatic Centre, and there's also um, items that were discussions that have happened over the media in the media over the past 10 years. So with the needs analysis report, I would like to have these questions answered as well, um, so that we are very clear in um, the um, aspects of what the Adelaide Aquatic Centre needs. Um, this term of council, we, we're faced with this decision, what we're going to do with the Adelaide Aquatic Centre. It is in need of um, attention and it's coming to the point where we have to actually do have some action on it. So whatever that looks like, whatever happens, and I don't want to go into a long-winded debate, and I know that people are going to bring up, you know, you know, you said this and I said that and Team Adelaide or whatever. But this is just a very simple request just to ask have those questions answered together with the need analysis report that will be provided by administration. Thank you, Councillor Coros. Councillor Abraham today. Uh, okay, members. Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, Lord Mayor, I will support this, um, but in doing so, I point out that uh, if you've lived in North Adelaide for ten years, you do know this history. You actually don't need it, and so in that sense, it's a purpose. But I am happy. Well, we're more than just North Adelaide councillors, Councillor Martin. We, um, we're, all of us, uh, need the information, and it's. Um, I'm sure that you wouldn't. Uh, no, no, deny I'm, going, us the I'm, information. Going, I'm going to support this, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I just express some concern that the intention is to elicit the response that the centre is not loved, hasn't been loved, and isn't going to be loved. Um, and uh, that disturbs me somewhat. But look, I, I am aware that uh, this is a pressing issue for the team. We do, they say, want to see this developed. Talking and to the motion, are we I talking am, to the, the request that the administration prepares a report? And I, I look forward to that report, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran. Yeah, um, I, I too support this. I don't know why um, it, it needs to be a motion. Um, all this information could be given to the councillor to um, fill, her, um, fill her in on what's been passed. I would ask, though, looking at the way some of those questions have been um, probably quite innocently um, asked, that, that, that I um, am also consulted um, for as the only person in this room, in fact this building and the next building that was here during most of that. There are some nuances there. The, did the state government fund at any time? Oh, no, hang on. Uh, uh, where do we? Did the City of Adelaide offer to give the centre? Well, I moved that motion, um, so I'd like to be asked about that. Uh, the other I'm, one. I'm sure. What the, can if I can get an undertaking from administration that they will find the information that they need to answer the questions? Yeah, three or be. That's what we'll do. And if there's any um, any information still required, happy to take it. Once. Well, I'd like to. Um, be informed of the report too, because as I said, for instance, one could ask the question: Did the um, did the uh, Marion? I think another question would be asked there: um, The history of the um, building of the Marion Swimming Centre. Now, if you asked a question, did um, the council ever put a bid in to be the um, to be the elites? Continue to be. We didn't actually ever put a formal bid in. We went to them, I think, Sandy, you might have been on council there, we actually went to them with our plans from Ken Hill and were told firmly, no, uh, we kept trying, keep trying, but on the books there's not a formal... Well, I think, I mean? yeah, I do, uh, Councillor Moran, I think if, if we, so at the moment what we're debating is the motion to get the administration to prepare the report, which will come back into us, and I think that there will be some consultation in the lead up to that, and also when that actually comes into us as well. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Moran. Uh, members, Councillor Albert, Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, as a member of the public that's been a regular user of uh, the Aquatic Centre for the past seven or so years, I'm uh, uh, very much looking forward to the report that is coming back to Council. I uh, commend Councillor Kouros for uh, bringing the community's uh, queries and concerns uh, to the Chamber and uh, uh, as I said, I'm very much looking forward to uh, what the report has to offer. Thank you. Members, if not, I'll go back to the movie to sum up. Councillor Kouros. I just want to be um, clear that these questions are questions that were um, asked by the community of North Adelaide to me. I could answer them, um, but I would rather that we all, and could have gone to administration to get one answer for, an answer for each of these questions. But I thought, because I got repeated questions, it would be great for the whole council, especially for the newly elected members or don't know the history of the Aquatic Centre. And I have been a user of the Aquatic Centre and known about it oh, since it's been there since 1969. So, you know, I've learned to swim there, etc. And, and my kids have, and, you know, I've had, you know, uh, great memories there. But I think that in going forward, we need to be clear and we need to be have the correct information, not just hearsay, um, and given to all the members um, here on council so they understand completely the history of the Aquatic Centre. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. We'll go to the vote. That members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. We now go to 15.3, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. If the uh, motion is put and I seek a seconder. Thank you, Councillor I'll, I'll be very brief. All I'm asking elected members um, is for the administration to hold a workshop for us to give us a bit of an update about the history of uh, Victoria Square, uh, specifically the development that Council undertook in the term of 2010, uh, 2014, and the ever long history of the redevelopment and master plans, the many master plans of Victoria Square. Uh, look, I think there's a, a really great opportunity for us, uh, potentially that may lie for the next council, if we're able to prepare the work ourselves. And in discussions with administration, I believe the bulk majority of the detailed design was already done uh, as part of this. There's potentially opportunities for the council to modernise some of this. But before we have a chat about master plans and potential uh, development opportunities, I'm just trying to get um, the elected members up to speed on, on what happened in that term of council and why we have half a square in the centre of our city. Uh, and I also think there'll be a great opportunity with the Central Market Arcade Redevelopment for us to tie in uh, some aspects of that design and connectivity to be able to activate the square better and potentially look at opportunities as well with the state government to be able to square the square um, and get it to where it really needs to be. Um, so look, I'd ask members to support this. Um, and hopefully, if the workshop is one of the positive and we need to pursue this further, then I'm, I'm hopeful that there'll be opportunities for us to do that in probably the third or fourth budget uh, of, uh, of this term of council. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Abraham, today. did you wish to speak? Members? Councillor Carroll? Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, look, I must speak against this motion, uh, unfortunately. Um, I do understand Deputy Lord Mayor's uh, good faith in bringing this in. However, uh, Lord Mayor, I, I see this as a precursor uh, to an inexorable push uh, to build more structures on what remains at present unmolested, uh, uh, the, the unmolested part of Victoria Square. Uh, Lord Mayor, when running for election, um, one, of the, uh, one of the most, uh, one of the views that resonated most with constituents uh, that I found was the view that Victoria Square, the redevelopment of Victoria Square, the outcome was a mistake, uh, Lord Mayor. In my view, uh, Victoria Square is an aesthetic uh, disaster now, uh, I, and I think uh, also it was a it was a sum of money that uh, um, I believe was wasted. I think the uh, push to build a function space in Victoria Square was redundant uh, when we had a perfectly good function space uh, down the road in the mil uh, military parade ground. Uh, and I think the uh, aesthetics of this Victoria Square, those gigantic grey pylons, uh, they they have a, a sort of a, you know, they're redolent of, a, of an Orwellian or communist uh, dystopia, uh, Lord Mayor. I think it was a mistake. This is not to slur the people uh, who are behind the decision to do this. These things happen. It has happened. 
However, uh, my view is that the public, the, the, the citizens of, of, of Adelaide and our constituents are best served uh, with what uh, green space, what open, unmolested green space remains in Victoria Square, remaining uh, as, as such, and any further money spent on Victoria Square spent on ameliorating uh, the disaster of the existing section of the redevelopment law. Again. So I must uh, uh, speak uh, against this. I think if we accept this, we are accepting an inexorable push. There'll be a workshop, there'll be lots of buildings put forward. I don't see uh, that uh, the push will be to keep it open, to, to grow some plants and perhaps to return it to the, the beauty uh, of Victoria Square in the 1930s, which was a formal garden, which would have cost a lot less than the redevelopment uh, that we are now saddled with, sadly. Thank you. Got Councillor Hyde, then Councillor Moran. I'm going to back Councillor Kira up on this one. Um, uh, not so much the aesthetics of it, although I do know that's been very controversial. Um, uh, I would just say that uh, I think the way that it's working now is, is fine. I don't think the southern part of the square looks like the poor relation to the northern section. Um, uh, and in fact, uh, I think if we're going to be spending any money on King William Street, we need to be spending it on King William Street South. Um, uh, and uh, we need to be uh, looking at upgrading the public realm along there because the pavers are pretty well shot. They're finished now that the um, City South tram stop uh, has been has been upgraded. It's now incumbent upon us to look at that area, which, by the way, is a main street, um, although you wouldn't think it looking at it, uh, but it is technically a main street zone and um, probably the most neglected one um, in the city. Uh, and we need to be going there and upgrading that public realm and supporting the businesses there, which have already been very heavily disrupted by the City South tram works um, and have also had uh, parking taken away um, as well. But um, when we go there and we tinker with the curb, it would of course be remiss of us not to um, think about uh, cycling safety along there as well um, and whether or not we can squeeze a bike path in there as well. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Moran. Yes, I support this motion. Um, this is not a motion about whether you like the square now or you don't like it. It's 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 very similar to um, Councillor Kouros's motion. It's been a long um, history of Victoria Square. Um, I think, I mean, the councillors have been here before, know it intimately. Um, we actually started with stage two um, through certain quite sad circumstances. Um, I personally thought we should have start, started with stage one, but the uh, designer was killed in a car accident and we were asked by his wife to do the most doable one because she was worried, and I'm putting words in her mouth, but that's what I remember, she was worried that if we did the engineering one first, we'd never get to the, the beautifying the square. And council at the time agreed with her. Um, I, I'm not completely happy with the way the square looks, but I think it's important we promised when we did stage two instead of following the stage one, two, three, four, that we would keep abreast of it. This doesn't say we have to do anything. In fact, Hassan's timeline was, was quite a way into the future. But I think it's important that councillors uh, get the knowledge that the more senior councillors have already got and then make a decision. The next, what I'd like to do was to realign the roads. And we argued strongly at the time, I think, uh, uh, Councillor would remember that the roads were due to be relayed at a certain time and that's what we based, uh, they, I think they had 10 years in them and then they would have to be relayed anyway. So it was argued at the time, well, why don't we wait till that, till the roads at the end of life and then we can do it all in one. I, I thought that was a logical thing to do and I understood the logic behind that. But I think we now should get the information. We always intended to do one, two, three, and four, um, just to say that you think the money should be set somewhere else. Well, there's always an either or, isn't it? We should really sell it to the starving children in Ethiopia. But we do have to um, keep keep the city looking nice. Victoria Square is a central part. We're about to have a very big development done um, in the GPO. So the focus will again come down that end of town. So I think to, to argue against a workshop is churlish. And um, if this fails, which of course I hope it won't, I, I urge the new members to get up to speed on what the plans were. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Hyde, you had a question? 
Um, yeah, just following up from Councillor Moran's point, uh, I have heard that about the road and the realignment. I did notice on those flashy things given to the paper that, um, or the, the digital broadsheet, that um, the road was re realigned on that master plan. But of course, that section of King William Street was recently repaved. Um, can I ask the administration, did anyone, did that, did a flick switch in anyone's mind to think, oh, if that I will, was I'll ask administration if any switches got flicked. Yeah. CEO. Three, Lord Mayor, I understand that those works would not have prevented or impacted on future development, but Clinton would leave that department. Can you answer that question more for us? Yes. I'm asking now. Uh, th through the chair, um, the resurfacing of the roads part of the normal asset management process. It probably would have occurred regardless of um, a development or non-development in the area. So, so they're in, in undertaking that, and so you're confirming that it was done by us, obviously, it's our road, so we did it. Um, in, in doing that, you didn't think to, no one thought to consult on the, the plan for the square, previous plan. Well, we've already spent the money, the road's really late, and I want to answer the question now. Um, uh, Clinton, can you just clarify who did the works? Was it council or state? Uh, through the chair, yes, council did the works. Okay, okay thanks. Thank you. Members? <laughs> Councillor Donovan? Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm very happy to support the workshop uh, because I am interested. I'm also, though, very uh, keen to explore further Councillor Carer's ideas around keeping things fairly simple and certainly to uh, further explore investment of funds along King William South rather than uh, extensive work on uh, Victoria Square and to consider that area and connect it in with a separated bikeway or the like. Sounds very logical to me. Thank you, members. We're drifting from the motion. Uh, if anyone else would like to speak to the motion, Councillor Abraham today. Just, just a question, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I think the workshop will help us realise the uh, unlocked potential that uh, uh, Victoria Square does have. And uh, if I could just uh, remind members that uh, you know when you look at when you look at masterpieces, uh, you know you got to look at the whole thing. You can't just look at half of it. You can't have Mona Lisa. Uh, up to her, her eyes or her nose. You can't have a Van Gogh starry night just, just seeing the clouds and not seeing the landscape. So let's look at the entire picture and then let's judge it. And uh, hopefully the workshop will do that for us. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor, would you like to sum up? Thank you, Nicole. Sum up briefly. I've never had to fight so hard for a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, sure. Um, look, there's been a significant amount of history attached to this, but there's been significant events as well. Santos obviously tore down under where it started there. Um, there's Indo, Indo Fest that's been on the square. Um, there's been many activations that have been very successful on the square. The Christmas uh, activation on the square is a big success. I was very uh, surprised to hear from Councillor Kerr as a central ward councillor to not want to spend um, at time to, to look at the master planning process of a central ward issue in Victoria Square. I wasn't I wasn't very surprised with the South Ward councillors of being Councillor Hyde and Councillor Donovan, where they want the money spent on the other side of the road, <laughs> where it's where it's their ward. That's very understandable. But you would be very interested to know that more than five members of the South Ward community got in touch with me and they were very happy to see the project back on the agenda. One that is a very active South Ward campaigner uh, that basically approached me and said, look, we're very happy to see this back on the agenda. It's a very important asset to the city. So look, I think there's a great opportunity here for us. And what I'm worried about is once we get the Central Market Arcade designed up and ready and starting to build it, there'll be a lost opportunity to connect this to Victoria Square, especially on that side. Uh, I agree with some of the councillor sentiments around the over-engineering and um, the over-concreting of a lot of those public spaces. Uh, I see what you mean. Uh, but look, I think there's an opportunity for us to at least try to connect that square well together. Because if you look at it now, and we have drones in these days, which we've never had before, which is quite scary because you're able to see the city from the top vertically down and you can see very clearly that you know something is just not wrong. It's not right there. And with all the space stuff we're hearing at the moment, people are going to be living on Mars and the moon, looking down on Adelaide and seeing through the massive magnifying glasses, this little square that is incomplete. And what sort of what sort of thing can we say about Deputy our city? Thank you, Lord Mayor. <laughs> Members, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried.
Uh, we go to item 15.4, Councillor Moran. I move the Council of Business EA arrange a meeting for that AM field in Charles Sturt Council to discuss their proposal to build a material recovery facility in Kilburn to process curbside recyclables and how such a facility may benefit ratepayers within the City of Adelaide. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Deputy Lord Mayor has seconded. I think it speaks for itself. Um, obviously, we uh, rubbish collection and recyclables have become um, a complicated issue with councils, and I commend Port Adelaide Enfield and Charles Sturt for um, for going ahead with this. Uh, we need to get in, make sure that we get in, and find out any um, any way that we can benefit from this to help our rubbish collection. When I first came on council, we lived in the halcyon days of the council really being funded by our Winfield dump. Uh, which was money for jam then. Uh, the government Labor government made us close it down early. Um, it was suspected so that the uh, dump at Dublin would become the only dump in town and we wouldn't compete. Uh, we then built a Council, worm... Councillor, I need you to speak to the motion. We then built a worm centre, which was for recycling. Um, we have now sold that, so we have divested ourselves from and I think at the time that the rubbish business was a pretty cowboy business that we were very glad to get out of. However, in doing that now the world has changed as far as um, rubbish and we need to maybe, maybe put, I'm not saying buy, buy a share or anything, but we need to put our foot in the water because we're going to have to come up, make some hard decisions about how we get rid of our rubbish soon. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor. Is that right? Members? Um, I also have got a, a very great interest in, in uh, you know, uh, waste and, and recycling and all the rest of it. And I'm just thinking, uh, uh, is it, uh, uh, would it be possible to have that conversation a bit broader than, than just those two councils? It's just, uh, we're having the state government talking about uh, how we are going to, um, you know, collect rubbish, etc. And uh, so. I think those conversations are ongoing, but we're talking to this motion tonight, whether we want to support the motion or not. Well, if there's a question, uh, are we having those conversations? And can we link that into the, this, the, the conversation with these two councils? Through you, Lord Mayor. I can assure council members that we're having conversations with all the Metro councils. They're all struggling with this issue. Those two particular councils have uh, undertaken an, initi an initiative which is of interest to us particularly. We've already had some preliminary conversations, we'll be having some more in the future, so I can reassure you that um, it won't be something we'll exclude. We'll certainly look to talk to other councils. Thank you. Councillor Abraham Zidder. Members, if not, I'll go back to the mover. Councillor Moran. Thank you. Members, those in favour? Those against, that's carried. Members, that takes us to 15.5. Councillor Abraham Zidder. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move the motion as uh, printed and seek a second. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, back in 2001, the uh, State Commission Assessment Panel was uh, uh, was set up, and I believe that back then it was referred to as the Development Assessment uh, Commission. Um, now, this was a uh, state government decision. Um, and uh, it's a state government um, agency that, uh, uh, that, that makes decisions that does affect um, our neighbourhoods and our communities. Um, they're not as connected to the community as we are, Lord Mayor. And so uh, to, to give uh, this decision making to uh, another body, uh, they may not make uh, the best decisions um, for, uh, um, uh, for our, uh, our neighbourhoods and our communities. Uh, they don't really appreciate and understand what goes on in our communities. Um, so uh, by um, putting this motion up, I'm hoping that uh, we can bring uh, the State Commission Assessment Panel and, uh, and Council uh, closer together. Uh, it's almost uh, bringing the left hand and the right hand together, bringing two agencies together so they can work uh, better together, understand uh, each other and uh, each other's concerns, uh, and hopefully uh, better deliver for, uh, for our communities. Thank you, Councillor Abermarine, today. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Members. If 
not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Members, those in favour? Those against? That's carried. We go to 15.6, Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I move the motion as quickly as a second. I have, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor was the first hand I saw up. Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, can I start by uh, uh, thanking you for uh, uh, for allowing me to, to bring this uh, motion to the Chamber um, for um, uh, the, the information and the guidance that you've provided me on, uh, on this motion. Um, we, uh, we know that the, um, uh, the Heritage Incentive Scheme um, is a successful scheme that uh, provides over a million dollars uh, a year uh, on, uh, on grants to uh, better preserve um, uh, some of our uh, heritage properties in the city of uh, um, Adelaide. Um, and we want to build on this. Last week um, in the committee meeting, we had a workshop that uh, highlighted the three pillars of, uh, of our heritage uh, uh, strategy, and that was to protect, uh, to preserve, uh, and to promote. Um, and the way I see it, if you want to protect uh, and preserve, um, uh, sorry, this is the other way around. The way I see it, if you do promote something, uh, you uh, you'll have a better chance to protect it and to preserve it. Um, and so then you'll get a cycle. So you promote it, you protect it, and you preserve it. Um, before last week, I had no idea that the city of Adelaide had almost 30 percent. Um, of the state's uh, local and heritage listed properties. I have no idea that we hold uh, almost a third of, uh, of the state's um, uh, state heritage, uh, heritage listed properties. So um, that does demonstrate that we do have a story to tell. And um, uh, I'll, I'll put my hand up and I'll say that uh, when we were campaigning, or when I was campaigning, uh, I would go from, from door to door and I would see the blue parts and every single, uh, you would almost come across a street where every single dwelling would have a little blue park. And so as you go from one property to another, it would, uh, it would tell you the story of that particular property and it would essentially tell you the story uh, of that street and that precinct. Um, so I say that if we have a story like that to share, um, if we have a story like that here in the, in the city of Adelaide, why wouldn't we want to share it and uh, promote it uh, uh, with the rest of the state, with the rest of the country and the rest of the world? Thank you. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Yeah, right. Members. If not, I've got to move to sum up. <laughs> Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Uh, members, we go to 15.7, Councillor Ho. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to move the motion as read and I see a second. I've got Deputy Lord Mayor, thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Firstly, I would like to thank the advertiser and ABC for the report. I have received over 200 messages from last evening. People are so thankful that finally someone could bring this forward to Council. Members, Chinatown safety has been an ongoing issue for a very, very long time, and it become worse and worse over the last six months. Promises got break into multiple times at night, and their own CCTV even got stolen as well. During daytime, there are many strange people actually walking to the cafe, restaurants, and yelling out for money, cigarette, and alcohol. And some of them even coming when they're half naked, topless, the pants are half job, and there's only one female employee in the cafe. Imagine. If that female employee is your sister or your daughter, how would you feel? It might not be a, it might not be a crime, but as a business operator or the customers in the cafe or restaurant, you tell me how you feel. As you might heard, 17 incidents in one month, and these are the incidents reported to police. And there were many more, many other incidents that have never been heard. Many ratepayers in the area have raised their concerns to me. And I noticed that if we, as a council, not to take actions immediately, things could become worse and worse, and it might be out of control. Chinatown Precinct is a very important multicultural hub 
and is also a very important business hub in our city. We can't afford to have Chinatown become another hardship. It is our negligence if we let that happen. But my name, our names, will be all on the wall of shame. I have met with over 10 community leaders last Friday. Some of them have been trading in the area for over 40 years. The feedbacks I receive are not positive. People don't think that we are doing our jobs properly. People don't believe as a police are doing their job properly. What really concerns me here is people think that council is treating them with double standards. The, they report this matter to council and SA police, a lack of action afterwards. Based on the feedbacks from the communities, there were three outcomes I would really like to achieve. First, CCTV on the side streets, like Field Street, Market Street, and Wright Street. I would like to have warning signs as well. Don't be embarrassing, I know that people don't like to see it, but it's about the outcomes, not our face. Second, better lighting in these areas. I don't need fancy lights and I don't need any atmosphere lights. I just want some basic lights to keep the area away from dark and crime. As you know, most crimes happen in dark. I just want people safely, feel safe to walk on those back streets and side streets. At the moment, there are no lights. Oh, sorry, I'm only halfway through. Thank you. Members, yes, um, you can have an extra two minutes, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. Third, police force back to the area. We used to have community police, but not anymore. We need the support from SA police, not meetings, not advertising, but actions. Lorraine, I need your help. The community need your help. Police work with the state government, Minister Corin Winger, and police commissioner, and find a solution for us. And we need that urgently. Lorme, we have just done our review on community engagement strategy, and let's do it properly, not on paper, but real connections with our people. If we know that it's a problem, let's fix it, let's deal with it. Let people see that we are actually working on it instead of sending them a letter or email saying that we will do it. Who knows when would you do it? God knows. Some of you might remember, I was going to move a similar motion back in April 2019, but I was told if this goes to the media and the media use the wrong headline for it, it might create a perception that this area is no longer safe. Hence, people stop coming in and let, let me make it very clear that the feedbacks I received, there were no negative feedbacks around lunchtime or dinner time. The best things only happen when the street is not busy. Members, I really regret that I did not move this motion earlier in the year. I watched the situation get worse and worse with my own eyes. I met with the police officer and discussed how to better engage with the community. The meetings went well, we understand exactly what we need to do, but nothing happened in five months, and I want this, I want some actions immediately. Oh, geez. Sorry, that's the end of the time, All right. Councillor Moran. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor isn't there. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Yeah. Yes. Oh, jeez. Um, I'm a little bit flummoxed that we haven't heard about this crime wave in uh, in Goodger Street in Chinatown for such a long time. I listened to the radio and it, it seemed very minor crime. Um, but nevertheless, um, as the representative has called this, council has to be very careful though that you don't, um, we had this trouble with Hunt Street, that you don't create a uh, an over-exaggeration that will bring, <coughs> that your constituents may not thank you for. Um, I think the first thing you probably could do, we certainly look at all this, but uh, get some lights in there quite quickly. I'm not sure about CCTV coverage. It is up to the businesses if they wish to, to but do their own CCTV. Um, I'll support this, but I think we, we don't need to be too over dramatic about how unsafe Chinatown is. I go there twice a week 
uh, quite regularly and also speak to the traders. I have never seen a semi-naked um, person anywhere around there, but perhaps I'm going at the wrong time. Uh, you'll have to go there a bit later. But I think Chinatown basically is a safe place and we should tread carefully when we, um, when we label it as uh, a crime wave. Councillor Hyde. Thanks, Lord Mayor, and I thank Councillor Ho for bringing this to the Chamber. Um, and I speak in support of it. I think it's a very common sense um, step in the right direction. Of course, we've all received emails as well about uh, safety in the, the south and southwest of the city um, recently, and it does appear that, that there are uh, ructions going on down there. I've had reports from business owners. Um, they say that issues that normally might be contained to Whitmore Square are actually creeping further and further out from the square um, uh, and are causing issues for the surrounding streets. And it wouldn't surprise me if that's in part having an effect on, on Chinatown here, of course. I would say that perhaps one of the reasons we might not be as plugged into the issues that occur in Chinatown is because it's a, there's a language barrier and a different uh, cultural group there. And of course, it makes sense that they would go um, uh, to, to the Chinese speaking council who, who represents them and who they voted for. Um, and so I thank Council Ho for bringing this to the chamber. I would highlight though that, that, that there is a risk here um, uh, as Council Moran said, of, of building that perception. Um, but there's also a risk here of us getting involved, too involved in public safety matters when that really is a purview for the state government. Um, uh, and so we know that it is very expensive to put in CCTV coverage. Um, we should be putting it in, but we shouldn't be um, uh, trying to, and I know we know that we say working with SAPOL, we need to be making SAPOL do their job as well or enabling them to do their job as best as possible. And where we think they're not performing or are underperforming or perhaps are under-resourced, we need to call that out as well. And we need to be asking the state government for more help when it comes to the city. Um, and that's not just in the public safety aspect of it, which is of course at the tail end of the issues, but this ties, as we know, all the way back to mental health, it ties back to homelessness and all these other associated social issues. So there's a, there's a whole uh, spectrum there of things that we, that are actually outside of our control. Um, and if it does need advocacy, public advocacy, um, then we should be looking at what comes back to us after this motion. Um, and by all means, calling out the state government and saying we need more help in the city on, on these issues. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I wonder if I could ask a question of the administration. Say Paul um, collects and collates uh, crime statistics from each street in the city, each precinct um, uh, on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis. As the administration has been dealing with say poll since July on this matter, according to the commentary, um, what is the percentage of a crime of crime occurring in Chinatown relative to the rest of the city? Is it one percent, ten percent, twenty percent? Thank you, CM. Sorry, Lord Mayor. Amy, if you could respond to that, thanks. Through the chair, um, in terms of actual crime reported, um, SAPOL releases crime stats on a monthly basis, but they can't be narrowed down to such a specific location. Um, however, police have not noticed any recent increase in crime reporting um, in Chinatown or surrounds. Um, that's not to say that the community has not expressed concerns to council and SAPOL and that crime doesn't happen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, look, I, uh, I do support this motion of uh, Councillor Hose. I, I, I am concerned also about this question of over-exaggeration, because if we do overstate it, uh, then there is a danger that the precinct itself may be damaged. If we're saying there is a crime wave in Chinatown, that there is a real risk of people being harmed, then the consequence is people will not go there. Nevertheless, um, uh, it is important for us uh, to stand with the traders, particularly when one reads that uh, they are arming themselves to protect themselves against this uh, crime wave, as I read today. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, we do need to address this uh, emerging uh, criminal element, and I uh, endorse thoroughly uh, Councillor Ho's proposals for signs, signs warning people that there are criminals operating in the area would be a good idea. And additionally, uh, lighting and CCTV camera 
would be of uh, great assistance. I am sorry that Chinatown has reached this point, um, but I have great confidence in SAPOL uh, managing this situation in collaboration with the administration. Councillor Haji had a question. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm assuming part of that safety audit uh, will include all of those prime statistics coming back to us. Coming through you, Chair. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the report would include the crime statistics coming back um, to you. Certainly, the audit itself actually references staff going out with staple on the street and a physical audit. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But and, and I would just say the report generally would include those stats coming back to us. Yes. Um, and can I also just get an undertaking that all SAPOL say categories are included in those? So those are, those are all categories of not just not just crime that's uh, that's reported and they've found a culprit and potentially arrested them. Those are where someone has called up and then they either haven't actioned it, or they've gone out and they haven't been able to, to find a culprit or something like that. Those often are left out of some crime statistics and, and the ones that they generally report. They're left out of that. So I I want a big picture view of it. So I'd just like to see that undertaking that all those statistics are included. <coughs> Uh, through you, Chair. I'm um, sure we can take that to them. Obviously, it will be up to SAPOL as to what data they release to us. Okay, you can FOI it if you need to. <laughs> Thank you, members. No, Deputy Lord Mayor. Well, just briefly, I, I remember um, when I first met um, Councillor Ho last year, um, just prior to the election, and when he put his hand up to run the election, one of the first questions I did ask him at the time was, uh, what are what is one of the main concerns you've got? The things that you're passionate about, specifically in your precinct uh, and in the central ward. And he brought up the issue of safety, security, uh, and that provisioning aspect, specifically around Good Street and and Chinatown. Um, and look, I have had through my interactions, there's been a couple of instances where things have been reported to me, but I do take it also from councillors that are closer to the action. Councillor Ho's office is on. Uh, on the street, he's better engaged uh, with the Chinese community in the area. You'll get to have his ear a lot closer to the ground than everyone else. I think um, this point's been made, but I want to sort of say it again. Um, the cost of CCTV cameras for council is quite significant. And from a policy perspective and policing perspective, a lot of that does fit within the uh, state government's remit. But also it's important to note if the cameras are not hardwired into a a room where people can in real time observe some of the action that is taking place. Uh, they also, their value uh, doesn't quite deliver on, on that outcome. Uh, we've seen, for example, in Hutt Street, the significant amount of cost that council had to outlay. Uh, with, sorry, Lord. Mayor. I'm checking with the CEO in terms of the comment you made about them being hardwired. So usually, um, I'm happy to ask the question, but I believe the Hutt Street um, surveillance cameras were um, wired into SA Poles, SA Police's uh, headquarters or monitoring service. Is that correct? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. There is a process that we go through. Do you want to just briefly explain, Amy? Thanks. Uh, yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. Uh, the, the City Safe Network has a series of 133 cameras, um, roughly, that are monitored by SAPOL. Um, and those are obviously, I think, the ones you're referencing, rather than we also have a, um, a series of other cameras that protect um, things like council assets, or yes. obviously traders have their own cameras that are monitored. Sure. And that's one of the points that I brought up before. Uh, if we, if any of this was to be monitored by a police, well, there's a significant cost uh, associated with that service. And what I'm trying to state before, if there is an appetite uh, and potentially traders are wanting to install CCTV cameras, there are potentially things that council can do if we identify this as a significant risk and council could potentially do through this audit support some of those traders. I know South Australian police uh, tend to use CCTV camera footages um, sometimes as well from those shops and from those residents uh, as they're required and the cost of installing some of that stuff can come in at $50, $60 a camera versus thousands of dollars that could be for rate payers as well. But look, I'm mindful that there is, but I'm also mindful from a reputational perspective. Uh, I did say uh, on radio this morning that these are isolated incidences, this is not organised crime, um, these are things that happen around the city. The vast majority of our city is safe. Uh, the vast majority of people that are attending Chinatown are safe um, and low-abiding citizens. 
but there will always be incidences, and if we can minimise those incidences, those incidences and that impact, then that's great. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Mayor. Members, now I'll go back to the move to sum up. Councillor Ho. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Members, especially those who have raised the concern about the perception. Thank you for your considerations. Seriously, like, I have my heart and my blood in the area. There's no way I'd like to see this area go to the wrong direction. And just a few things that I'd like to clarify about the signs from Councillor, Mar Councillor Martin, that I don't want a sign saying that this is a, I mean, criminal is happening in this area. I just basically try to tell people that this area has got CCTV coverage. Don't be stupid. Oh. All right. And, uh, and in regards to the CCTV, all right, I have received many messages from our ratepayers only that they will like to put money in it as well. They support it. If we don't have enough money, I don't mind to go to the community and raise funds for it. If we could do it. Councilor Moran. Um, apologies. So really, like, I mean, just to sum up, though, like, on one hand, I wish the council can really deal with this matter within our own capacity. I understand there's only limited things we could do. On the other hand, Lord Mayor, could you please urge state government and SA police to deal with this matter, deal with it in an urgent matter? Because at the moment, at the moment, let me tell you, it is small crime. It's more than more like annoying thing than something that really, really serious. But if we do not stop it here, things will go worse and worse, and traders in the area will lose confidence and running their business in the area. What if? What if they move to the parade? What if they move to Ani? They don't have to stay in the city to do their business, and this is not what we want. So, members. Could you please support the motion? And I believe the community will remember you for a very long time. Thank you. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. I can take us now to 15.8. Councillor Hyde, motion on motion? On. Take it as read and seek a second. So, Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, this needs a very little explanation. Uh, I think it's a discussion we've more or less been having amongst our own ranks for a little while now. Um, uh, I would say I'm a recent convert to the idea. I, I really don't think it's absurd to give councillors dinner, um, uh, considering the hours we work and the fact that we just get a mere allowance, not actual remuneration. Um, uh, but what I was particularly what I was particularly disturbed by was the immense cost that these dinners uh, uh, have um, on our rate payers. Um, I, think, I think we get very bad value for money and um, it doesn't surprise me sometimes that government gets wrought on contracts, but this one is particularly egregious. Um, uh, I do think uh, that we uh, should be getting rid of these dinners. I think now um, you know, we can see that they're outside community expectations, but particularly the alcohol, uh, provision of alcohol as well. Um, I don't think the rate payer should be um, uh, allowing us to, to get ourselves sloshed. Not that we really do that, but um, uh, you know that's something that really we should be paying for ourselves. Um, and of course, if we want to, we can uh, we can bring it in, or we can go and support one of the many uh, uh, pubs or small bars after meetings and, and uh, support our ratepayers that way by buying drinks from them. Um, uh, I would say as well, um, just to clarify, of course, it was raised by Councillor Sims, who obviously isn't here with us today, um, uh, that uh, we do want to still provide for our staff. Um, so just to clarify, I, I think getting rid of the set menu dinners um, uh, is one thing that's very clear in the motion. Getting rid of the alcohol is very clear in the motion. Um, uh, it wouldn't, and to answer questions I've had both um, from staff and, and uh, councillors, it wouldn't uh, preclude allowing for light refreshments provided in Lady Esther Jacobs' room or something like that um, before meetings, whether that's just a, a cheese platter and a couple of sandwiches. Um, uh, and that, again, um, could be sourced uh, through going to a local business um, or somewhere in the city like that. So um, just to clarify on that, uh, and it is, of course, um, as, as Councillor Sim said, uh, it's an occupational health and safety issue. We need to keep people fed. Probably wouldn't be bad for us to come to the meeting 
um, uh, with a bit of uh, food in our bellies as well. Um, I think it makes us a lot nicer. So um, uh, with that, I commend uh, the motion to you and uh, thank you for your consideration of cutting this uh, out of date perk. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Abraham today. Did you wish to speak? To? Thank you. I have Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, um, as we all know, this is a rather mean-spirited motion thrown in without notice after um, we could, some councillors had to leave the chamber. I do not think this is worthy of this chamber. I, I think most of you have made up your mind which you'll vote. Uh, I think it's unworthy of this chamber to debate this, so I move that the motion be put. Do you have a second, councillor? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. So if I can vote members on this motion being put, those in favour, those against, the motion will be put. And now we vote on the motion, those in favour, those against, that motion is carried. Uh, thank you, members. Well, that takes us to item 16, motions without notice. Are there any motions without notice tonight? If not, we go to item 17, um, which is exclusion of the public. Councillors, there are two items presented with a request for consideration and publish each item in confidence, sorry. Each item will require a motion and decision to order the exclusion of the public to enable consideration. Can I have a mover, please, for 18.1.1? Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, and a seconder, Councillor Canole. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. I'll also ask for a mover for 18.1.2. Councillor Canole, seconder, Councillor Abraham today. Members, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Um, thank you. Um, I will now ask actually for everyone to leave the chamber. Um, I'll only ask uh, these people that I named to remain in the room, and that will be Vanessa Godden, uh, my governance team, uh, Jenny, Kylie, Kylie, and Rudy. And if everyone else can please vacate the chamber. Rebecca, I'll get you to stay here for 18.1.1.